to the AIM Alumni Association of India, fellow alumni, uh, AIM alumni, and uh, distinguished listeners. Thank you. Uh, Nikhil, thank you for hosting this, this talk. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, we all know that what businesses we want to go into now, no? Uh, you have the PPEs, you have uh, disinfectants. Well, two years from now, <laughs> I think a lot of us will be in that kind of business already. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'd like to also mention that, you know, I'm saddened with by, by the loss of lives, saddened by the loss of business, downturn in our business. I'm saddened that, you know, things are still in lockdown and, st and some people are still getting sick. Although I'm happy that a lot of people, there are so many people also who are doing very well and a lot of people are seeing the silver lining in all, in all this, okay? But one thing we know for sure, like in all other crises, this will pass. And uh, we're hoping that everything will turn out very well for all of us. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of the many crises that I've been to. Uh, uh, we'll never be finished if we talk about all the crises that I've been to and my businesses that I've been to. So I'll talk about a few, maybe six or seven crises that I've, I've been to. So the talk is about going, going from one crisis to another, growing from one crisis to another. Okay, I'll, I'll put in my my presentation. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's loading. <clears throat> All right, do, do you see it? Yeah, it's morning. <laughs> okay, all right, good. <laughs> Still loading, okay. So, uh, I'm Joe McSainside, ME 2001. Also, uh, your entrepreneur in residence at the Asian Institute of Management. Today, uh, I'll share you some stories. Well, sorry, more or less, it's a, it's a, it's the potato corner story. Okay, I want to crisis number one. The first crisis towards the towards the start of the potato corner was in 1992. Uh, first crisis was in 1992. My wife and I had our first born. Okay, we had a son, and a lot of you are saying. How can that become a crisis? That's a time for celebration. A birth of a child is a time for celebration, right? Well, it is. It is definitely a time of celebration because we waited five years to have a son. We were getting, we were getting angry at people telling us, when are you going to have a, a children already? You know, so people were saying, do you know how to make children? So, it's, getting, it's getting on us already. So definitely we were so happy that after five years, we had the sun, okay? But the crisis there was because I already could see four years from now, we are going, we were going to have a financial crisis. My wife and I, we were going to have a financial crisis because I was still at Wendy's at the time, working at Wendy's, my wife was working also. So the salary combined we had, we'd not be able to pay for a school, the kind of school that my parents sent me. So that was to me already, a problem I could see four years down the road. That's why, that why, that's why it was a crisis for, for, for us. So now, in a way, because there was this anticipation, we anticipated this crisis, okay? So we were able to prepare for it. How did we prepare for the crisis? I, I started opening my mind to what thing can we do to add money 
we're saving so that pay for our child's education five years from now. So then, you know, as we went on, that was always on my mind now, preparing for that time. Then I started selling watches to, to the lowest hanging fruit, which are my co-employees at Wendy's. I sold watches pay, to be paid on installment. And then I graduated from watches to appliances, to electric fans, to refrigerators. Then I realized how difficult was that in collecting when it was in terms. So I, I'd, I'd, I'd be... I'd be collecting during payday, be with them during payday. So it was difficult. Then I found a way to add another another income. I started buying boxes of empty French fries at Wendy's. When I had a, a carload of of boxes, I went to sell it in a province in in the Philippines called Bulacan, and for a for a decent profit. And still kept my mind open. Kept my mind open. Until I was asked by four, three partners if I, they, I could join them to help operationalize a concept. So I met, I went to the meeting. So when I went to the meeting, they said, this is Potato Corner. This is the concept. It's flavored French fries. This is the first of its kind in the, in the world. So, you know, I said yes. So I helped, I helped. I did some numbers pushing. Then I arrived at well, we arrived at 150000 as the capital needed to operationalize the flavored french fry idea of potato corner. So that, then, then immediately that day, I had, a, I had a, another crisis, financial crisis, because I didn't have any money. 150,000 pesos at the time divided by four was 37,500. It's like what, $700. I didn't have that kind of money. So I borrowed. Good thing I had a brother-in-law who had money. <laughs> so what are you family for, right? So if you have family, you know, borrow money from them. Okay? So I borrowed. So then we opened. We opened her while I was still working at Wendy's. And I was, we were all surprised. The first store paid back in 30 days. It was a success. I don't know. Maybe because it was the novelty of it. It was because... Uh, because it was the first fried, fried in a cart inside the mall, it was probably because it was flavored french fry, something new. And maybe because, and I think, because french fries, thanks to McDonald's, Burger King, they made french fries a staple product. What we did was just tweak the french fries a little. So it was a success. The problem now is the next crisis we faced was of course, how to grow the business. So that's crisis number two. So let me review crisis number one. Crisis number one is about anticipation. Anticipate in you know, a crisis so that when the crisis happens, you're no longer facing the crisis. You've actually gone through above the crisis already. So anticipation is always better than being in the crisis itself. But of course, there are crises that you cannot anticipate. Today's crisis is something that we never, nobody, I think, anticipated. Uh, maybe there were a few, but they didn't share the, the, that, that problem. So like had giving birth, children studying, going to school, those are crises in the future that you can prepare for. That's why you have insurances, you have college education insurance, you have HMOs, you have life insurance. So those are uh, things that will help you get over crisis when, when the time comes. Crisis number two. Because of this, because of this uh, success of the first store, uh, we we got so many opportunities, or calls no? from people who wanted to put up the same business now, because they they saw how they liked the product, they liked the concept, the simplicity of the concept, and then. We also were be being asked by some landlords, can you put up, we, we have a site for you. Can you put up our store here? Can you put up a store there in our location there? Our problem is we didn't have any money. The money back in the first month was just to pay our loans. So, because I was at Wendy's, I was familiar with franchising, sort of. In 1992, there were not too many, there were hardly any franchise consultants in the Philippines. There were few things about franchising it around. 
uh, except for those Jollibees about McDonald's and those stuff. So we researched. And then because I think it was an advantage that I didn't know anything about franchising too much, we formed our own rules on franchising. And it also so happened that in the Philippines, there are no franchising rules. So you can do any form of franchise in the Philippines. I don't know about India, but I know Singapore is very strict in franchising. The U.S., United States is very strict. They have franchising laws almost everywhere already. But in the Philippines, there are no franchising rules. So you can do any form or any permutation of a franchise. You can call anything a franchise. But to, as long as, to me, we will not hurt people. You know, we respect people. So we create our own rules. And our second store was franchise because we didn't have any money. And I, the beauty about the franchise, use other people's money, use other people's time, use other people's organization. So we franchise. The second store was a franchise. And for the first two years, we grew to 70 stores. 80% or 90% of those were franchised. It's, good, it's a good thing we franchised. Because if we did not franchise, we probably wouldn't have ended up where we are today, the dominant player in the industry. Because on the first two years, there were, we, counted, we counted those who copied flavored french fries. There were about 300 people who copied the product around, all around the country. But that two years, because we franchised, we, are, we had 70 stores, so we were the dominant player in the industry for that product category. And, and to my mind, you know, it's to my mind, it's not about first mover in this kind of business. It's not about first mover. It's first to dominate who always becomes perceived as mover and is the one who becomes the dominant player in the market. So I cannot talk about how I can't talk enough about how important franchising is to us. And I think it's applicable to many kinds of businesses also as a way of growing. But there are a lot of people who are not comfortable with franchising because some say, no, I'm scared because I'm sharing my secrets to a partner that I don't know really, really know. But, you know, but to me, it's not. I think, I think I want to share everything. So really, to grow, you have to share. To grow, you have to share your, your profits, share your business, share your business so that you can grow and make it become better. Okay. A lot of people ask me, when is the right time to franchise, to grow via franchise? And my answer has always been, as soon as somebody asks you, can I buy a franchise? You better be ready to say yes. You know, when we franchise Potato Corner, the second store, actually the first 20 stores, we didn't have any operations manual. We didn't have any contract, just a handshake. We, all we did was a handshake. We had nothing. We just owned the brand and the, uh, and the flavors. So uh, if you don't, because to me, especially for, for a business like Potato Corner, very simple. Everybody can cook French fries. Anybody can make flavored French fries, right? So if you don't give the franchise, if you don't share your business, what happens? Because these people who already approach you and want to franchise already, they, that means they already believe their product. They believe in the business model. They believe they can, they want to be a part, your partner. So if you don't do that, if you don't give them your franchise, if you don't share to them your business, what happens? They will most likely create the same or copy the same product that you have. And you might create, and you're probably already creating your own competitor. So don't create your own monster, share, share your business, give a franchise. It can be a franchise, it can be a part, it can be whatever form as long as you're sharing always. Because if you can say, no, I don't like you, it's not like the story of, you know, of a Lamborghini. The owner, truck builder goes, he says, uh, I want you to build this. And then Ferrari said, no. So Lamborghini owner say, I will build my own car. So no. so Ferrari got his own competitor now. See? So share. Share is always the best. I'd like to add also, no, crisis number two. I'm talking about franchising. 
there's a, there's a stu- there was a study that uh, 90% franchise if you, uh, compared to starting a business or a franchise is always better because you have a 90% success rate than starting your business from scratch. Okay. Crisis number three. Who's in charge? Okay. Uh, okay. So I think I got the I got the one of the. When I mean crisis number three is not the. I was talking about the franchise rate. What I'm talking about. There has to be only one, one person in charge. Uh, this in Potato Corner happened because of, during the first two years, the first three years, started having friction among partners. We were four partners. Okay, we had a vision. We didn't. We didn't know very. Well. We're not. We're not. We were not businessmen. You know, we were employees, uh, and we were not business graduates then. I wasn't a graduate at all, you know. So, uh, so the four of us, our vision was just wanting to buy a cellular cellular phone for ourselves and to buy a car. Okay. Uh, uh, that's it. But of course, you know, the way we wanted to achieve that vision, different. So we had we started to have friction on how where how to run the company, how to get there. And then it came to a point that we, we that uh, let's not break this partnership because if we break the partnership, uh, we might lose the company. We might lose this income we're getting from the dividends and from this success of the, of the Potato Corner brand. So we decided to say, can we get a third party to, to run the business for us, to teach us, to help us draw the line where friendship and business and being business partners can be drawn. So we got our we had a, we had a guy who was doing our audit the audits. His name was Donis. So we asked Donis, Donis, can you can you come in and you know share the board and be like the CEO for a while to help us run the company properly? So he came in. He agreed. So what he did was he put he put different units separated us to handle each business unit. One handling finance. One handling the supply chain, the other one handling operations, and the other one handling marketing. So it was good. Until after two years, we realized we were paying this guy, we were paying Donis maybe too much. So we said, "Okay, Donis, thank you. Uh, we're we're done. So can we can we run the company? So you know. So we asked Donis to go and then running the business. Now, there were a few frictions, but more or less, we knew already more or less the right formula, which was really the best, the best, the best, the best way to run the company is just there has to be only one, one person running the company. Uh, how many, will you have your people getting confused because of the different directions, no? So it's not good for the company. So one person, two people, Two people running it already is chaos. Imagine four people running together. That's that's chaos. So our lesson really is four partners or two partners, only one partner will run. Ten partners, still only one run the business. Otherwise there'll be chaos. So you'll have to trust you'll have to trust each other. So anyway, we really re- realized how important the board was already by this time. So runs Decides on the strategic direction, strategic direction, and rating partner runs everything the, what, with what the board approves. Okay. Uh, crisis number four. Almost immediately after, after we got to f- fix ma- ma- more or less our management and decided maybe one partner should run it, those things. There was, and I mentioned a while ago, there was still a little friction in the way we're running because we were still all uh, running the business because our source of livelihood or income was in the company as managers. But I said to myself, you know, I'm a guy, I'm, I'm easy to. So I said to my partners, I leave, I leave the company. I 
I'll leave the company. Why don't you guys run it? So I, I left. I left Potato Core in '97. Uh, joined well, '98. I ran for. I tried politics because of my, you know, my my background. My my family, my family is uh, into politics. The late President Ramon Magsaysay was my my dad's brother. So I just said to myself, maybe politics is in my blood. Why don't I try it? So I tried. In '98, I ran. I ran here in the Quezon City area, and I lost. So now I know that politics is not my blood. It's in the blood of my relatives, but not, not mine, definitely. So just maybe business is good. And working is good. It's better for me. So didn't have anything to do. I lost in running for office. So I ended up in Mr. Donut, as GM for Mr. Donut Philippines. That was the same time that the, the, in 98, 99, that we were already getting hit by the Asian financial crisis. And what happened during the Asian financial crisis? Cost of goods went up, you know? Uh, from, from, 100, from 120 stores in 1997, we ended up with 40 stores. If not for one franchisee in Cebu, there will be no potato corner left, you know? So my hands are, you know, my hands off, hats off to, to our franchise, Theresa in, in Cebu for keeping Potato Corner open. So, uh, financial crisis, that one we didn't expect. But what we learned from that crisis was very important. It was the foreign exchange that hit us. So now, what do, what do we have? We have a portfolio of different currencies so that we're not affected too much by spikes in currencies by different countries no so we have dollars we have euros and yuan. so it helps it helps it helps so so i placed balance no? because we have to balance everything the way we do this. and then of course you add balance sheet make sure you have a healthy balance sheet so after the financial crisis i'll go back again to what we did to save the company we went back to our franchising. We went back to franchising again. From 40 stores in 2000, we started to join the company. And there was a blessing also here. The silver lining here is during my entry in Mr. Donut, which was owned by Ramcar Battery Group, they sent me to AIM. So imagine, no? And then they were going to ask me, they asked me to. So I chose. I chose Master of Entrepreneurship because I thought this will help me for Mr. Donut. And then, uh, so I took it. it was the ME course is, is, is an 18 month course. And then Mr. Donut was doing well. We grew, we grew Mr. Donut from 1999 when I joined up to 2000. We opened uh, almost one store every day for three years. So we built, Mr. Donut from 200 stores to more than 800 stores while I was there. But while I was there, I was worried about Potato Corner because we're being hit pretty hard. Okay. So now armed with something I learned from AIM, from the master's degree in entrepreneurship. You know, I got, I got confidence now. Now I know I knew something about business. So, you know, I got confident. Armed with a business plan now, I made a business plan. So I showed it to my Potato Corner partners. Can I run Potato Corner again? I didn't want to lose. I was still an owner of Potato Corner. I didn't want to lose that, you know? And then, so I said, can I, this is the plan. Can I run it? Can I run the business? And then I'm glad my partner said yes. Then we started growing the business again. We started again by franchising. So I thank our franchise system, our franchisees, our partners, because without them, we wouldn't have grown to where we are today. Crisis number five. Uh, in, spite, in spite of my, crisis number four and five are, are related because one of the reasons also I left, I left Potato Corner was because I didn't, know, I didn't know anymore what to do. I didn't know how to handle uh, shareholder issues. I didn't know how to handle management issues because, you know, we were not 
I didn't study that. I didn't know anything about business before. So I left. I'm glad Mr. Donut Ramkar sent me to school. Uh, I reached my level of incompetence at that, at that stage. So after AIM, you know, I learned a lot. Then I continued to study. So Harvard Business School. And then until now, I continue to study. In fact, after AIM, I got uh, Danny Antonio, Professor Gar Gar uh, Professor Danny Antonio, Professor Adi Peria to sit in the board as independent directors of Data Water. And that moved out a lot because they continued to teach us in the board, not only me, me and my partners as well. Uh, and then I continued to study. So it's very important so that you don't hit your level of competence. So you, you scale up, you scale up your brain, you scale up your the way you do business also. So they call it the Peter Principle when you reach your level of competence. So thank you to the AME program. Thank you to AM. That you know, it was a, I was able to get out of that level of incompetence. So thank you to my classmates also, to my batchmates. So you made you made studying very very happy. So. When I came back to Potato Corner during or after that financial crisis to grow it again, or to save Potato Corner, so uh, I had the confidence to run the company. Crisis number six, management capability. When we were growing, when we were growing Potato Corner after the fin Asian financial crisis, we noticed, well, I, I, I noticed something. Uh, I noticed that we will not be able to. I observed that we will not be able to compete with other with other companies because we didn't have management could We didn't have management capability. I'm. Uh, I was already well. We we tried hiring some good people, but we couldn't afford to pay them the way, for example, Jolly B or McDonald's will be able to pay them or Unilever. So. They'll just they'll use us as stepping stones. We will not be able to hire good people. Uh, so what did we do? We adopted. The way we adopted was with consultants. Our senior heads were, man were consultants, and we gave them the titles of management consultants. We had management consultants for HR, for operations, for logistics, for everything. So we had, we had high caliber consultants for every department. Uh, running the business, helping run the business, and and to my mind, you know, and I said one time during a, during a, a talk, uh, we have more management capability than many of our competitors, than most, than practically all of our competitors, because because consultants are always on top of their game because they have so many clients, okay, and then you're paying action of a full time person because you're sharing it with other other clients. They're, the full-time pay and a lot of people also are not are not comfortable with hiring consultants business because I get comments why are you hiring Joe why are you hiring a consultant to to be to run a department they might just tell whatever you're doing your tactics your strategies to, to their other clients and to my mind it's okay it's part of sharing it's part of sharing your but you know and it forces you to always level up and to for enforces you to, to change and make things better so that people cannot copy and copy you. So you're actually becoming a trailblazer on your own, right? By by changing and changing the way you are. You keep on changing. So it helped. It worked for us. In those in those from 2001 up to 2015, we were a company run by managing consultants. We, we were able to find the best managing consultants. Okay. Right. Crisis number seven. This started in 2014. Uh, the thought of me getting out was enhanced by by starting 2014, because I had my first brain surgery in 2014, 
and then now I have, now I've had, I, I had five, I have now been through five brain surgeries, and then just recently, uh, kidney kidney stone surgery. So every time, every time I have a brain surgery, it takes six months of recovery because of the, you know, how how sensitive the 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 brain is. I have a tube now here that runs down to my abdomen that relieves brain pressure. So that's a lifetime thing already. So the nice thing about this, it forced something good. You know, we realized management, their managers leveled up. So it turns out I made myself redundant. So I didn't need to be in the day to anymore. The people, the team was able to level to step up for the shareholders. So we were blessed with a good team. And then I realized, because, oh, you know, every year surgery, so maybe it was time for me to go. So it was a long time. It was a, it was a, it was a difficult decision. It, actually, it's a five-year decision also just to, just to let go and let somebody run it no? and let the team take care of us so, and stop doing day-to-day -day anymore. So now I still, I still help decide on the strategic direction as chairman and emeritus. But the team takes care of the business for us. Crisis seven is where we are today. Okay. When the lockdown happened, hundred percent of our stores closed. Okay. What did we do? We tried to search for our heroes now. Uh, So we have about 200 heroes. We call them special forces. They are people who sell our flavored French fries in their homes because we have franchises who cannot operate because most of the stores are in their malls. So they sell from their house. Our employees who are in their house. Our friends, our, fam our, friends, our families, our customers are also stepping up. They are now stepping up to save the company. So they, we call them our special forces heroes. So uh, in a way, they're also, we call them an, uh, another term, no? a rapid deployment force. Because why rapid deployment force? Because we have to set them up right away to build revenues right away. And then I was asked, why are you doing this? Uh, a franchisee asked me, why are you doing this? Isn't it bad that these people that are not franchisees are selling franchise? No, this is not. This is not an issue of franchising. This is not an issue of uh, we're not going to make money this crisis. What we're trying to build is loyal. We just want to be relevant during this time of crisis. We are building loyalty so that when we start op opening again, they will be there and they will say to themselves and they will tell their stories to their kids and their friends. We were a pot potato corner special force hero. And after this crisis, we're going to give them medals of honors. So they're our heroes. So it's very important that we remain relevant because once the lockdowns are, up, are, are done, we will reopen. We will, we will start strong again with franchising. It's going to be franchising and our partners who will take care of us again. So, you know. The, the slide you see is like I think thanking our special forces to help us sell potato corn around. And then I have a slide that I borrowed from Professor Edmo. Uh, love is the basis for compassionate leadership. So this, this special forces is a way of extending. You know? We're always thinking of you. We want you to do something. You're our employees who cannot go to work. Maybe at least they can augment their income by selling potato corner and our non-potato corner products as well. So we have fish balls, we have uh, lumpia, we have fried chicken also. Those are non-potato corner products which they can sell. So we're always thinking of them. We're thinking of our customers, we're still thinking of our franchises, even during this time of crisis. It's not about us. It's about what we can do for them so that they can be our heroes. So, uh, winding down, no? Let's, I hope we can pray for each other. 
and I'd like to thank you and wish you well. And I hope to become one of your partners later on among the businesses that I have. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to finding a way to enter one of the biggest markets in the world, which is India. So I hope one of you can become my partners for India and, and Nepal and, and Bangladesh and all, these, and all these countries out there. So I'm looking forward. I have, a, I have no business that I have on my own. Everything I do are with partners. So the, the secret, the handshake there is we partner together so that we will take care of each other so that when we grow the business, the business will take care of us. I'm looking forward to being your partner. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Mike. I can say this is the 20th webinar that uh, I'm hosting, but I have never come across a more straight from the heart, as we say in India, they'll say right from the heart. Amazing presentation. So guys, uh, I can unmute y'all if you want to raise your hand. But my only request is, only question, no CP. You can raise your hands if you want to ask a question to Joe Mike. I'll unmute you. Or you can put it on the chat box, whatever is okay. Uh, there was one question from Prof uh, Professor Boromio. He asked me, is your father a senator, Gennaro Maxisai? Is that oh, Hinaro, Hinaro, yeah. Senator Hinaro Magsaysay was my dad's brother, my uncle. Uh, there is one question. Uh, anybody? No, there's no, no question at the moment. Just one second. Guys, if you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand. No issues. Shekhar, go ahead. How to become his partner? He actually welcome to become partner in India. So let me understand the process. Uh, okay, looking forward. Let's talk soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So how, how to connect with you? I, I'll give you the email ID, Shekhar. Yeah, yeah. That that would be great. Thank you. And just message me after this talk. I'll sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, we we'll, no, we'll, we'll let Nikhil, uh, we'll pass through everything, we'll funnel everything to Nikhil. So in a way he wants me to filter. <laughs> I'll do that, okay. <laughs> uh, there's a question from uh, my batchmate, uh, Vinci Karak. Uh, can I ask how the heroes for Potato Corner implemented? I mean, how, how did you go about it? You know, in this time of crisis, when there's chaos, you also move in chaos. You cannot have a chaotic situation and remain a process driven. So for us, for me, you know, for me, chaotic situation, that's why I placed on a slide, desperate, desperate times require desperate measures. While there's chaos, we will, we will move in chaos as well. So our special forces army, no rules, no contracts. You just, we just say, you, you take care of the business. You sell potato corner products, cooked or uncooked, during this crisis. And then after this crisis, you will all disappear. You'll have done your job, and we will cite you for that. A question from Professor Domingo. By the way, Joe Mack, we have two profs with us today. One is Jumbo, and other is Professor Domingo. So Professor Domingo has asked a question. What's the Hi, prof. What's the more important management lesson you learned from EIN? So it's about it's about taking care of uh, your employees. About 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 the that's why I showed the the slide of uh, Prof Edmo. It's about being a compassionate leader. Uh, question from Kirby Chua: How can we effectively do a valuation of a franchise even if we only have one branch operating? Uh, can you can you repeat that question? Yeah. How can we effectively do a valuation of a franchise even if we only have one branch operating? Just one branch. <laughs> well, well, I think that's a, 
one branch. Well, it's not a franchise with one branch, no. But, but of course, there. You know, you can do an asset valuation and a cash flow valuation. Uh, there's a question. I, I would do. I would do. I uh, know. With one outlet, I do a cash flow valuation, plus plus brand equity. Uh, there's a question from Anthony C. Uh, he says, "Sir, I saw you were at Professor Domingo's webinar yesterday. What insight did you get, and how will you apply in your business model?" Excuse me. Can you repeat the question? Uh, there was a presentation of Professor Rene Domingo yesterday, right? And uh, he, you were there. You were present, right, Joe Mac? Yesterday, were you there at the presentation yesterday? At Professor Domingo's presentation. Hello. You un unmute. You you put yourself on mute. Unmute it. Yeah. Can you hear me, Joe? Okay. I can hear you. I. I we can't hear you. You're gone on mute. Can you hear now? Can you hear? Joe, can you hear me? Your mic is on. Hello? Can you hear? Can you hear now, Joe? Hello? Can you hear now? Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello?
Can't hear you. Hello, Joe. Uh, hello. Hello. Joe, I think you're. No. Uh... Can you hear now? Hello? Yeah, Joe. I cannot hear, I still cannot hear anything. I'm surprised. Can you hear now? I think something anyway so what i'll do is I, i'll ask you the question no no i'll ask you the i'll ask you the okay okay do that you leave the meeting and come again yeah okay okay guys he will just leave the meeting and come back again because uh, there is some technical issue Then you can hear me, right? Adi, you can hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I can hear yeah, you now. Great, great, great. Okay. Uh, so the question I just uh, ask you. Uh, the question was from uh, Anthony. One second. Uh, Thank please, you. Uh, sir, I saw you. Uh, were you at the Professor Domingo's webinar yesterday? And what insight did you get? And how will you apply in your business model? Hello. Did, the, did you get the question? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, my 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 take home from prepared, prepared Professor Domingo's talk was really uh, more onto 
to start preparing already so for 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 after the lockdown start preparing today so that you know when when the when the lockdown is 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 over you're ready to go and not still planning so right now you should be planning for for to how, planning for planning to restart the business already okay uh there's a question from Michael uh, Sherwin Makantagai. Is there any instance where you had serious disagreement and fight with your partner that eventually led to parting ways? How did it start, resolve, and end? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it happens. One time we were in a board meeting, one partner got the gun out and put it on the table. So, you know, that happens. It happens. I mean, it happens to us, maybe happening to other boards also. But it went, it, we, 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 we've gone through that when a partner is angry. In fact, one partner, one, one of our founders sold out because, because of disagreements, or friction maybe. That, that partner wasn't attending the board meetings anymore. So I, we, offered, we offered to buy him out and then he sold. There's a question from Bong Aspe, ME3. Uh, he said, Hi, Bong. Yeah, Bong. Uh, after this crisis, is it the right time to expand to franchising, or we should wait for a few more months? No, my my like what I said a while ago. If somebody asks, you better say yes, because the window of opportunity for a franchise is not big. When people start asking a franchise, maybe that's your window, but that window might close. We don't know if that window will remain open for a long time, but while the window of opportunity is open, when people will ask you for a franchise. You better say yes and let them let them in. There's a question from Sudeep Lord. How do you let me let me add something? You know, Bong is my my classmate, so and he's also my partner. So Bong is one of our special forces heroes also. So let me let me answer that also. You will get a lot of you know I mentioned a while ago that you will get so many. We're getting a lot of consultants, right? So. We're, I just want to, I will tell you, consultants are really good. They've been done very well for a company. But the way we handle consultants are like this. We ask them what the best practices are. We tell them what we want to do. And then we, we hope that the consultants can do what we want them to do. The, we don't follow best practices. We create our own best practices all the time. That's the way to make you ahead of the competition and to be a trailblazer in your own, your own industry. So we'll keep on reinventing the rules. So we require this from our consultants. Tell us what the best practices are, and then together we will make our own best practices. So don't always listen to what the consultants will say because they'll always say best practices. You help, you help guide also what the consultant will do. Because if you let the consultant say, what they want, they will always give you best practices. You don't want to do best practices because if you do best practices, you will always be like everybody else. Okay. Uh, the question is from Sudeep Noor. How do you decide amongst the partners on who is going to be in charge? Among the, uh, how do you decide? Can you say that again, please? Among the partners, how do you decide who is going to be in charge? How do you decide? Uh, uh, a vote, you know, there's a vote. Uh, but you have to have also, you have to be assertive in a way. Like, like for example, in 2001, I told my partners, this is the plan, can I run the business again? Uh, and then this, 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 you know, I was retired, right? I retired last July. And then this crisis, I asked my partners if I can run the company again during this crisis. And they allowed me to. So it's really... It's really your part of your assertion because you think you can, because you have the confidence, because you have the wisdom and experience. It's also because if the partners trust you and see that they can, they can trust you also. This is a question from Venu. There are three questions, but I'll just go for uh, one of them. The other two, Jomag, I'll send it to you. Uh, how, okay. was, how hard was your travel from being a COO to CEO, a CEO? In spite of the fact you are reporting to your brother-in-law, uh, more insight in handling family than others, and uh, how do you manage day-to-day, -day, and whom do you trust? 
I trust. I have a, I have a, I kind of trust everybody. It will take somebody to do something for me to distrust them. But normally, I always trust everybody. And I think that, that people can see if you trust them or not. And because if you trust them, they will do something good for you. But if you show from the very beginning, you even have a little distrust in what they're going to do, they will not perform as well as if they feel you trust them 100%. And you know, look, I left when I thought they didn't, they didn't like me. I left when I thought there was friction. I left when I thought maybe they want to run it. So it, it's me also. I cannot change what they do. I cannot change who they are. But I can change what I do. I can decide on my own. And eventually, this is not the, this is not the second time I returned from to Potato Corner. This is actually the fourth time I came back to Potato Corner. The two, two the, the first, the Asian economic crisis and this one, I was the one who asked if I can run the company again. The other two, it's, it's my partner who asked me to run the company again. There's this question from uh, Canada. Uh, I told the person that you have a shop in Vancouver. You opened a few days back. What about Toronto? I'm being asked. Well, th those will follow. <laughs> so the next thing about the potato corner strategy, uh, to my mind, the way of conquering, like putting up one store in one country and growing it first before going to another country, that is conquering 300 years ago. That's the way of conquering 300 years ago. The way of conquering now is putting one fort in every country so that you, you build your brand equity, you build confidence in the brand and to, to other people. And then you start growing in every country. So that's the reason why some people still follow the old ways, I think, follow the old ways, because what's important for them are efficiency, but not in the industry that we're in. We're in the micro industry. And in the micro industry, Nikhil, to me, the most important is flexibility. And like today, when you have need pivoting, we're more, that is more important to us than efficiency. There's a question from Sushil Srivastava. My question is, what would be the impact of COVID-19 on franchising business, particularly on QSRs to kiosk model in FNB sector? Uh, or what would you suggest for startups? Would you like to grow through franchising model, but uh, does not have very strong supply chain or centralized inventory system? quite a long-winding question. So you can just ask about, you can focus on the impact of COVID-19 franchising business. Well, I think franchising will, of course, franchising is going to take a hard hit and nobody will want to, to get a franchise. Everybody will start saying, maybe CapEx will stop spend, investing more on business first. Let's look into where we are first. In fact, that's one of my recommendation. Look first where you are, take care of what you have now and then New investments, maybe we'll, st we'll set that aside first for now. Let's, let's see what we can make whatever we have now stronger first and then revive everything first. So franchising will definitely take a hit. And then I think maybe people will start franchising again when, when, the, when there's going to be a vaccine already. Uh, because, you know, it, aside, of course, but, but some services, uh, some, some businesses will be still worth franchising no? uh, like your health care health health services that I think can still be a very good business this year and some business will be very good and some not there's a question from Anura Goel MM 2011 recipe is a secret in any food business you said that you have been sharing all the secrets to your partners do you ever feel insecure while sharing those any bad experience and how do you keep a check well, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad sharing what what we have, but of course, there's always there are always bad experiences. You have because it's a lot of we we all know about values. People have different values, and then we don't we don't really want to to check too much on values because we're not like a McDonald's or a Jollibee where well, you have to spend twenty five million or thirty million, forty million for a franchise. I mean, a potato corner franchise is what, $500, $1,000, oh, oh, sorry, $7,000 to $10,000 for a kiosk. So 
we don't really check on that because uh, it's not worth it to be to be process driven on that kind with that kind of investment. But this, uh, so my answer is there is there are plenty. There are also plenty that uh, we end up not working well with because their values are different from ours. But in the end, it's easy to, to, to look for another partner. It's easy to expand because of the nature and the kind of business model that we have. There's a question for Rajan. Will the Corona Heroes and other franchises coexist post-Corona and how? I didn't get that. Will the Corona Heroes and other franchises coexist post-Corona and how? Well, the franchises will remain our our franchises after the Corona epidemic, pandemic. The the special forces that are non-franchises will will disappear slowly, and they will have served their their uh, their purpose in our in our in our ecosystem. They will have saved the company, and we will find a way to to take care of them in some way. But there will be other models that we'll find. There will be new models of of our business that we'll find from this, from all these special forces. They will be starting, we'll be starting to do ghost kitchens. There'll be, there'll be this pocket home special forces will be doing way better than anybody else through their homes. And maybe we can look at their business model and enhance that already. So it will be, we will find the success one or the outliers and we will see who's, who these outliers will be so that we can make a new business model out of this. Uh, one question is that uh, how did Potato Corner penetrate the Gulf region? Uh, because there are American McDonald's, KFC, and all are there. Uh, what was your strategy there? Well, uh, it would uh, our presence in the United States, and, our, and of course our our presence of Filipinos there. Those two, those two. Those two things played a very crucial role in opening in the Gulf states uh, because there are Filipinos there. So some, some of the Filipinos did their own initiatives in finding a way to partner with somebody from the Gulf region. And then the U.S. has been our showcase for the Gulf region. People who've tried our product in the U.S. went back to the, to, to the Gulf region to say, I want to open something in the Gulf region. Uh, Professor Domingo is with us, so I just uh, will unmute him and I would request him to speak a few words on your on your business model. Or, prof, prof? Hi, Prof. Hello, Prof. Can you unmute? Yeah. Prof. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, Joe Mag, thank you for your sharing. Very, very interesting. I, I learned a lot. Thank you, Prof. I learned oh. a lot from too. Thank you. Yeah, but but you're the you're in the field. You're you're, you're the the doer, right? Uh, I'm just a professor. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, a lot of insights. Uh, I think uh, a lot of our alumni learned from your sharing. A lot of passion, a lot of trust. I think that's the most important lesson in this uh, sharing. That you have to trust people in order to grow, right? You have to share. Right. I think that's the biggest takeaway uh, in in this. Uh, story potato corner and willingness to learn okay willingness to learn all the time never ending as we say in kaizen continues huh? and i think what what i admire in you is you, right that's yeah you always are down but you always get up right and, and this is the the what what makes entrepreneurs entrepreneurs huh? okay you, you're down but you you can get on your feet again and and move on right so a crisis is not a problem to, to entrepreneurs. Huh? It, it's just a milestone, right? Uh, it, it's, it's a given. Well, so you, you have, it's a milestone. It's a milestone, right? <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> so yeah. you have to get over this milestone. Huh? Yeah, yes. it's a story to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice story. Those, those seven crises. Huh? Yes. Well, thank you again for sharing. Thank, thank you, Renfro. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we have heard about your uh, uh, business crisis, but a person who's sitting there having five brain surgeries, having kidney stones, and still thinking of expanding into India, 
and other countries a big clap for you that shows your resilience you're an amazing person <coughs> and uh, i mean it's a very emotional thing for me because i never come across anybody who has had five brain surgeries who still stand sitting there and uh, still doing this i mean it's really amazing so thank you very much uh, joe and uh, i should uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, that uh, in spite of your reluctance to speak at many occasions uh, you bestowed your kindness on all of us and uh, thanks a lot pare god bless you and uh, and any time in india you require any help i am there and uh, our team is also there so you are always welcome all right thanks thank, thank you thank you thank you thanks everybody bye thank you bye.